I had to put on a hat because my hair was just being too wild and it's very ugly right now so I really don't want to show it. I didn't do anything to it or anything. I just brushed it out and it's just too much. Anyways guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Anthony, back to you guys with a new video. And for today's video, we are going to be talking about a true crime case that actually took place in my home state of Washington. Not DC, Washington State. A lot of people, when you say you're from Washington, they're like, oh, Washington DC? No, Washington State. Like Twilight with the trees and stuff like that. I found out about this case when I was researching like craziest true crime cases that took place in Washington. A lot of the cases that showed up were talking about Ted Bundy. He has like so many movies out about him. He has like documentaries, all of that stuff. And this case I'm gonna be talking about today has like zero coverage that I've seen. So grab a snack, light a candle, and get cozy because we are about to talk about the case of the tube sock killings. So let's get started with where this case took place. Now this case took place in around like Pierce and Lewis County in Washington. I actually live like a couple hours away from these counties so that's very scary. I'm glad I wasn't alive when this was happening. The first victims names are Stephen Harkins and Ruth Cooper. Their bodies were actually discovered on August 14th, 1985. The couple had planned a weekend trip to the lake and when they did not show back up to work on Monday, their families were very, very concerned. So they called the police and filed missing persons reports. So Harkin's body was actually found in his sleeping bag, suggesting that he had been shot first. Their pet dog was also sadly found shot to death, but Cooper was nowhere to be seen. It took the police officers a whole month to even find any remains of Cooper. So a month later, Cooper's skull was found and they had to use like dental records to identify that it was Cooper because they couldn't tell, they couldn't recognize the, the face, the skull or anything. The rest of her body and belongings were found like scattered around in the forest. And one thing that really, really stuck out to the police officers was that there was a tube sock wrapped around her neck. More than two months after these first murders, the second pair of victims were reported missing. On December 12th, Mike Reamer and his girlfriend Diana Robertson decided to go on a camping trip near the Nisqually River with their daughter, Crystal. Also, FYI, the Nisqually River was just 30 minutes away from where the first murders happened. The same evening that they had left, their daughter, Crystal, was actually found standing outside of a Kmart alone, about 30 miles away. She was only two at the time, so she wasn't verbal enough to provide the cops with enough information however she did say one thing she said mommy was in the trees now because of the winter weather searching was very very difficult for the cops so they actually had to put it on hold for about two months until it wasn't cold and snowing on February 18th 1986 Diana's body was actually found in the snow near route 7 she had been stabbed 17 times and a tube sock was tied around her throat. There was no sign of Reamer anywhere. So the police brought in bloodhounds to attempt to find him, but they couldn't. The only thing that they could find was his pickup truck. There was something inside his truck that really intrigued the investigators on this case. There was actually a manila envelope on his dashboard with the words, I love you Diana, written on it in his handwriting. This was very sus. The investigators were a bit confused because why would why would there be an envelope that says I love you Diana sitting on his dashboard? This made them start to think that maybe Reamer had something to do with Diana's death and maybe he dropped off Crystal at the Kmart after killing her. After doing some digging, the investigators had found out that Reamer actually had a history of domestic abuse and Diana and Reamer just got back together right before they went on the camping trip. So this was one big red flag for the investigators. He was the main suspect. But the question is, where is Reamer? Where did he go? The most agreed upon story at the time was that Reamer killed Diana, drove Crystal to Kmart, and then fled. He, he left. And because of the tube sock pattern, the police actually suspected that not only was Reamer responsible for Diana's death, but he was responsible for the first couple's demise as well. This was also more convincing when they found out he was very familiar with the area, with the lake. He was the prime suspect. He was the one that was basically linked to the first location and the second location because he would camp at both and he was seen at both before. So they thought it was Reamer that did the killings. Like they, these people actually believed for a long time that it was him. Now, 
The case went dead for about 26 years, so no new evidence, no new nothing. They had nothing. The families, Crystal, they didn't have anything. No sign of Reamer anywhere, so they can't lock him up. They thought he fled and they couldn't find him, but no sign of him anywhere until there was a major development in March of 2011. This development caused everything the police thought they knew to once again be under question because they really thought Reamer was behind it. A partial skull that belonged to Reamer was actually found within a mile radius of where Diana's body was found in 1986. Because of the age of the skull, investigators actually thought that Reamer was a victim too. They believed that he was killed around the same time as Diana. They only had a small part of his remains, so they really couldn't put an answer on what his cause of death was. Even after decades with like the advanced technology and stuff, investigators are still left with more questions than answers. Given the uncertainty, the notion that the tube sock killer was active beyond these two incidents is not far-fetched at all. For all we know, there could be undiscovered victims buried in the Washington campgrounds. We don't know. Since this case is unsolved and there has been no new information since they found Reamer's skull, I really wanted to tell you guys what I think happened. Now, I really do believe the first story that the police thought that Reamer killed Diana and then drove Crystal and dropped her off at Kmart, but I don't think it happened the way that they said happened. Since Diana and him just got back together, I think they weren't in a good situation at all. So them going on this camping trip was probably like, maybe they thought, hey, we could fix this. We can go camping. We can try to work things out. I just think that things went like really south. Now, I don't think he necessarily took them there to kill them because otherwise he would have killed Crystal too. That's, that's just what I think. Maybe an argument broke out between Diana and him and uh, he lashed out because he had a history of domestic violence. It's not far-fetched to assume that maybe him and Diana got in a fight, he lashed out on her and killed her. Now, I think after he killed her, he then tried to like hide her body under some of the snow because this was in the winter time. And I'm really kind of confused as to why these people were going like camping in the winter that I don't know That's just kind of weird. I don't know if that's like normal. I've never been camping. That might be normal I think he tried to hide her body and then he took crystal in the car He dropped her off at Kmart and for the envelope that says I love you Diana on it I think he was just like feeling guilty and he went back to the campgrounds and killed himself within a mile from her body. As for the tube sock that was found around her neck, I think he did actually try to strangle her at first, and then that didn't work, so then that's when he shot her. I just kinda can't see how there can be an other person involved in this situation. Maybe there could be. Maybe there was an actual murderer that was in the woods, but, you know, Reamer had a history of domestic violence. He just got back together with Diana. He would go to the campgrounds a lot, you know, all of the campgrounds he liked camping, he would be seen there a lot. So it's not far-fetched to think that he would take his anger out on people. Maybe that's what happened in the first situation. He was angry, he went to the woods to like cool off, he came across some people and decided to take his anger out on them. I don't think it's far-fetched to assume that that was the case. But I don't know. I don't know if it's just me, guys. I just can't see there being an actual third party involved in this. I think it's definitely Reamer who had something to do with both murders and then the guilt ate him up and he just decided to kill himself. That's just what I think happened. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really want to hear you guys' theories on what you think happened. Um, do you think Reamer did it? Do you think there was another person involved that maybe did it? Please leave your thoughts down in the comments below and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.